This series is going to cover the basics. Right now, we're going to be covering the creating the model. Then we're going to bind the model. Then we're going to check it in the software, see if the channel mapping is correct. Now, this is something a lot of people overlook and actually forget to talk about here, which is a very important thing because that could dictate if your quadcopter will arm or will not arm. And we're going to cover everything you might run into and how to fix also. And I'm also going to be showing you how to set up your channels for arming and angle mode and your buzzer and everything of that nature. Now, in future videos, we'll be covering the Lua script. We're just going to go a little bit more advanced, which how to change your PID tune through the display here. And you could do all kinds of crazy cool things, but we're taking it one at a time here. So with that being said, let's get started. Now, the first thing you want to do is power on your RT transmitter. Now, you might get a couple warnings. For example, I have my throttle up, so that's a throttle warning, which means basically I should put it down, and that goes away. Now, you have a switch, which is not in its correct default position, and this is done for safety purposes. Instead of just quickly, you know, for example, I had my battery here, and my arm switch is already on, and then all of a sudden, as soon as I press enter here, it just quickly arms it, and it goes crazy. So you got to be very careful. So just keep flipping the switches until you get them on the default, and then the, it'll boot up here. Now, you could also skip this with pressing the enter button, but I highly recommend not doing that. So once the controller is in the main menu here, what you want to do is you want to find your menu button, and it'll go into something like this here. And as you can tell, we are in the model select section here. And what you want to do is you want to go scroll down, find an opened one. So we're going to do, we'll just do 20 here. We're just going to go right there. And we're going to hit create model. So I'm pressing enter here and it's going to do this. Now, if you do get this, I highly recommend just exit out of it because it kind of screws up the uh, setup process, especially if you're doing a quadcopter. So I just press exit. And now, as you can tell, we are selected. You see a little star next to that model 20. So when you create a model, it automatically selects it for you. So the next thing you want to do is we could press exit and then we could press menu. And then you want to go ahead and press page. So after model select, this is the first page, as you can tell, or the first menu. We press page. Now we're on the second one. Now, this is a very important one. This is where we're going to spend most of the time right now. Model name. This is what you want to set it up. So we're just going to call it um, ABC since uh, this is basically the ABCs of the controller here. So here's ABC. And if you want the letter to be a capital letter, what you do is you just hold the enter button. And as you can tell, we got ABB. So I'm just going to press exit. So once we finish typing it, we're going to just press exit. And then now we have this highlight and we can move down. So you want to go ahead and move all the way down. Some, some of these might be a bit different when we go down to the internal RF. So we want to find internal RF. Now, uh, you could go to access, but more than likely, probably the access D16 is going to work with you, especially if you're using an XM Plus radio. And by the way, I'll have all compatible transmitters and receivers linked down below. So if you get any of those transmitters in the links down below and any of the receivers below that, then those are completely compatible. So right now we're going to go to access D16 because I'm using an XM Plus radio here. And this hasn't been up late, up to, updated to the latest firmware, and it doesn't really matter right now. So we're using the Access D16, and you want to go ahead and find Bind. Now, we don't want to press Bind yet because obviously our receiver is not turned on, and we also need to get it into Bind mode. And let's go ahead and see how we would go about doing that. So the first thing you want to do when you're about to start binding your quadcopter after you've built it is you want to go ahead and plug in a USB cable into the flight controller. And you might be like, well, why do you do that? Well, once you plug that in, then you'll see if the receiver actually boots up. So you keep an eye on the receiver. If the LEDs turn on, that is great. That'll make your life so much easier. That means we can do everything with just a USB connection. However, if when you plug in the USB, your receiver does not boot up, then you're going to have to plug in a battery also. However, when you do plug in a battery, I highly recommend you remove your propellers so you don't get your fingers chopped off. So keep that in mind. So I'm about to go ahead and plug in a USB cable. So as you can see, once I plugged in my USB cable, I do see my receiver powering on, which is a really great sign. Now, uh, if you've never powered this on and it's not connected anywhere, it should do some sort of a status of the LED. Maybe they're all the same, but some might be different. So right now, well, I know for a fact that I'm getting slow flash of red, which means obviously nothing is connected to this. So it's really good to kind of memorize these. So right now we know in this mode right now, nothing is basically connected to the receiver. So now to get into bind mode, we need to find the button that's on the receiver here and if we take a closer look we see that it's right there that gold one right there and what i want to do is just press it so right now i'm pressing it in and then i'm going to go ahead and bring in my power source now you know i'm saying power source not usb because yours might be different you might need to plug in a battery to get it into bind mode if you if your receiver does not boot up with the usb connection so i'm going to go ahead and click this and plug in the usb 
and it could be kind of a nightmare sometimes. Now, as you can tell, if you take a look at the LED, it's doing something completely different when nothing was connected. So we know we are in bind mode now because when nothing is connected and it's powered on, it's just blinking red. Now what we see is the green and red LED are solid. So obviously now we're in a different mode, which obviously should be bind since we did this correctly. So right now we're in bind mode. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this slightly away and we're gonna go ahead and grab our transmitter here. Now you want to kind of move it about two feet away because sometimes it won't bind because they're so close. It's kind of weird, but you just got to keep that in mind. So right now, again, we left off at the bind section right here. So before I click it, well, actually, once you click it, uh, you'll get presented with this here. So you, usually I do 9 to 16 telemetry on. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but you can do what you want here. So 9 to 16 telemetry on is usually best because... I usually it sends telemetry on channel 12, which we'll cover in a later video. So before I go ahead and click OK on this, I want to take a look at also at my receiver here. Now, if you take a look, it's still solid. And if we go ahead and click on the transmitter now, we can actually see the LED change. So that means that it's bound. However, we're still not done yet. What we need to do is we need to get our controller and just keep pressing exit until we get into the main menu. And when we bring back our quadcopter, we have to power cycle it, which means turn it off and turn it back on. And I'll do that just very simply with the USB uh, disconnecting and connecting. And then if we take another look at our receiver now, we should see that we have a completely different status. So here we have a solid red. We should actually just move the controller away. If you move the controller away, as you can tell now, it's solid green or flashing really fast green. So obviously we, had, we went through three different status LED changes. And that means we're basically on the right track. It seems like everything is correct. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into beta flight. So beta flight is going to show us if our receiver is actually connected. Now, and again, if you're powering the receiver through the battery, if you had to, you now also have to connect the USB. However, if your receiver is powered through the USB, you don't need to plug in a battery and you're going to be totally fine. So in our case right now, we don't need to plug in a battery and we can just go ahead and open beta flight while this is on and also the transmitter is on. So once everything's connected and you have beta flight open, we want to go ahead and press connect here. Now, for example, this was a pre-built quadcopter. I'm assuming you already know where to connect your uh, receivers on the flight controller. You would have to connect your S bus into any RX pad. And once you know that, for example, I connected my signal to UART2, then you would set up Serial RX to be as the default place for the receiver. Now, I did cover this in my build video, so you can go ahead and check those out. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go to configuration. This is very important. And you want to go to a receiver. You want to make sure serial based receiver is selected. And then it opens up this down here because if you select something else, that bottom one disappears. Serial based receiver. And you want to make sure you're on S bus right now. And once that's done, don't forget to save and reboot on the bottom right corner. So we'll just double check that. We'll go ahead and click save and reboot. So it'll save and reboot. Sometimes it'll connect, sometimes it won't. Just disconnect and reconnect it. It'll connect depending on beta flight in your PC. So next, we're going to go into the receivers tab. Now, as you can tell, this quadcopter right here is spinning. And that means that something is very much wrong here. Now, if yours is not spinning, then you should be good. What this means is our channel mapping is currently incorrect on beta flight how beta flight is reading the channel mapping and how your transmitter is outputting that channel map and it's a very simple fix so if you see this here then what you want to do is you want to go to the channel map and then change these for example fr sky seems like the obvious choice we click save and it's still spinning so let's just go again we're going to go to spectrum and we're going to go ahead and press save and as you can tell the quadcopter stopped spinning if it's doing the slight movement that's fine don't worry about that. But as you can tell, it has stopped spinning and we could come back up here and double check this. And the way to do that here, for example, now we all know this is throttle right here. So we want to take a look at if the throttle is going up and down. Now, if you have this auxiliary 12 going crazy like this, what that actually is, is the RSSI. That means your signal strength. So what you want to do is, for example, right now, this is on auxiliary 12. You want to go to your RSSI channel up here and make sure auxiliary 12 is selected. If yours was auxiliary 10, then you'd want to set up auxiliary 10 and you'll be able to set this up in your Betaflight OSD. Just grab the RSSI icon, which I might show you towards the end of the video. So once this is all set and done, go ahead and click save. So we're good to go into that perspective. Next thing is going to be the modes. Now this is where it loses a lot of people. So for example, the switches up here, we want this one for arming. We want this one for switching between modes like 
acro, which is like no stabilization mode and stabilization mode, maybe a buzzer. So we're going to cover those right now. And the way we do that is with these right here called auxiliary switches. We have auxiliary one, auxiliary two, and all the way up to 14. And what these are are basically channels. So for example, your, your, your transmitter right now, the first four channels are being used for the control, which is the roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle. So here's one channel, two channel, three channel, and four channels. So that's four channels right there. So, but they're calling them AETR or ART, whatever they are, the roll, pitch, yaw. So now we know that these are four channels. So this has to be channel five. And this will make more sense right now once we dive into the menu on the uh, transmitter itself. So we need to go into our transmitter here and we're gonna go ahead and press the menu. Then we're going to press page. And as you can tell, I'm on page two, page three, page four, page five. Now, might, you might think inputs might be the place, but it's actually not. You want to go to the mixer. So the mixer is very important. Now, as you can tell, look, now it's starting to make sense. Channel one, two, and three, four. Those are for the controls that we saw. But now channel five has nothing. Now, how can I make channel five, for example, be this one right here? I want this one to be arm right here. So the way that I would do that is I would scroll to channel five click on it, and now we see source. So once you click source and st it starts blinking, then it waits for you to move a switch and it'll select that switch to be uh, the source for channel five. And you can also see it on Betaflight once I do that. So right now I'm gonna click right here on source where it says S1, I click on it, and as you can tell, it's blinking. While it's blinking, I'm gonna switch this right now. And as you can tell, now switch D is activated. Now make sure you press exit. And now, as you can tell on Betaflight, you can see auxiliary one going up and down, which is channel five now. So let's go ahead and set up two more channels. For example, one's going to be for uh, my mode, so I could select if I want acro mode, and one's going to be for my buzzer, which is this momentary that I want right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on channel six. Same process. I'm going to go to source, and I'm going to make this for my modes, which is going to be this one right here. And as you can tell, it switched to switch C. Exit, exit, exit until I'm back here. Go to seven, channel seven. And again, we're gonna go to source. As you can tell, source, forget what, what's, what it says right here. And I want this one to be my channel seven, which is gonna be auxiliary three, if you take a look at Betaflight. So now our auxiliaries have been set. Now we need to assign them a specific function, which we'll do in the modes tab right here. So now I've gone ahead and cleared out my modes. So the first thing you want is arm. So obviously to arm the quadcopter so you're able to fly it. So what you want to do is you want to click on add range here. Now if you don't remember which auxiliary you've set, and if you have RSSI this might be a pain in the butt if you set auto. So what you can do is you can set auto and quickly flick it. And, and then once you do that it actually set it by itself to auxiliary one which is this one, what I wanted for arm. And let's repeat that again. I went auto. And sometimes if you do have the RSSI like I did, it might take over that channel, but you could double check it by clicking. As you can tell, nothing's really going on. So we're going to go auto and then just flick it really quick since we have RSSI. But if you don't have RSSI, you don't have to run into that problem. Now you can see oh, this little orange dot that tells you where the actual switch position is. Now, as you can tell, like this, nothing will ever happen. It'll never arm because in order for you to have it arm, you're going to have to move it all the way back here. You need to move this slider. You make sure you don't do it like that. Make sure you set it up like this. So right now, like this, it's not armed. And once we flip it here, it's going to arm itself. So now we have our arming set and done here. So now next, I want to, for example, set up angle mode, which is the stable mode, which is uh, if I move to the left, it'll always come back and stabilize itself. And that's called angle mode. Be careful of horizon because if you, for example, moved past a specific uh, threshold here, it'll actually flip and you might not expect it and you might crash, break it or just hit somebody. So you want angle mode, which doesn't allow you to flip here. So the way I set this up is I would go to add range again. And I like it to be default. So uh, right when you first boot it up, it's already in angle mode. And we're going to set it to auto. And we said it was this switch right here, which I believe I had set it up to auxiliary two. Now, if auto is not working for you, what you can do is go back to your receiver tab and double check this. And we're going to see, because I wanted this one to be for my modes. I flick it and then I could see that it's auxiliary two. So we can go back to our modes. Oh, and you, don't forget to save. We, we forgot to save here. So we're going to add range and it was auxiliary two. 
double check that and I want it to be as default when the controller first boots up it's already in angle mode and I could switch it into acro when I need it to and the reason why I still do fly in angle mode well, I don't really fly but if I have a bug around me and I'm flying with the goggles on I would set it into angle mode hold the throttle slightly hopefully I don't lose it and just reorient myself or get that bug away from me or whatever that might be whatever might be going on so it's really good to keep angle mode so now we're going to go ahead and add a buzzer and the buzzer is right here we're going to go add range again and I know it was three because I had three switches and it was the last one. So that's all good. And now if you if you take a look here, nothing will ever happen because you can see the orange dot on default position is there. And once we go here, it's over here and there's nothing really going on. We have to move this slider over in order to have it activate once we go there. And now you can see this orange dot right here move every time I flick the switch into the correct position and it's getting activated in this area don't forget to save don't forget to save so just keep that in mind and now we're going to go ahead and just double check everything so pitch roll and yep everything is working and like this we're basically done setting it up however let's go into the osd because we did have an rssi channel later on i'll also show you how to set this up if you don't have this in a little more advanced video so if you take a closer look here we have the rssi on channel 12 and we can see it going crazy right here so if i move the, the controller away or behind me we can see the rssi so we can go to the osd tab right here and you can see rssi value usually they're checked off like that so you can go ahead and just enable it and move it somewhere where it usually comes in the middle. So you want to probably like move it over right here or wherever you want and then just click save. And now you have, it'll give you your RSSI or your signal strength while you're flying, which is very useful. And you can kind of know where your limits are so you don't screw anything up. And that's currently it for the beta flight setup, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I'll make sure I answer those. And uh, stay tuned for the more advanced tutorials. We're going to take this again step by step. We're going to cover Lewis scripts. We're going to cover latencies. We're going to do just a lot of crazy cool things so we're just doing this as a basic setup here and i really hope you guys enjoyed the video everything is linked down below make sure you check what is compatible with what and if you do click the links to support the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out